and uh, one of the corollary was that uh, if an analytic function has a, a non isolated zero then it vanishes everywhere or in other words if there is a extension of an analytic function in a domain beyond it, its definition then that extension is unique. Okay, so, let us take some examples of this because this is a very uh, interesting property of analytic function and it uh, the log z function is something we will be very interested in. So, and that also had a peculiarity in for complex plane definition and uh, let us try to see how that works out. So, earlier what I said was that uh, look at the function log z is a one to many function and uh, to get a sensible function out of it one to many is not something very nice. So, we split this into infinitely many functions. where log of uh, and let us give it a specific notation So, that is a kth starting from 0 the logarithm which maps r e to the i theta log r plus which is that is a unique value and i theta plus 2 pi i k where k is an integer and theta lies between 0 and 2 pi. actually this k can be negative also it can take a negative integer it can be any integer. Okay. So, pick any one of this. So, specifically let us say for k equals 0 pick the function that function is defined over this strip log zero z is defined over over this strip and uh, this line is not included the bottom line is included and this strip is mapped to the by this function to the entire complex plane except 0. Okay. Wait, is that correct? Why do why do no why except 0? will map r equals 1 to 0. So, log 0 is not defined. So, this maps to the whole complex plane. What 
I need to do here is that when I def take the strip, I need to take out zero also from here. Zero also cannot be part of this because log zero is not defined. Okay. Now, this strip is not a domain because the domain has to be an open set, and so we can't even talk about this function being analytic over because we need an to define analyticity at a point we need to look at its neighborhood and that at these edges does not quite exist. So, a clean way of handling it all of this and the fact that 0 is also remote is to just look at this that we say log set this log k is defined inside this precisely inside this strip not taking the two edges in at all. Then it is a domain and it is well defined inside the domain and it is not too difficult to see and I think I gave it as an assignment problem to see that log z is analytic over this domain this is all wrong this is the range of log z you are very right. So, let us change this. So, this maps except the point 0 here to this strip, but that uh, now let us see what else do I need to do. Okay, fine. So, let us re redo the argument. So, this is the domain this is the range in this I am the question is that uh, around this line when we approach this line from top or below the continuity is does not exist. So, again the so continuity is not there and analyticity simply is not there. To make sure that log z is defined in this fashion is analytic whatever copy we are considering what we do is we take out this line entirely from the domain. So, take the positive real line out from here all the way because this line is what is causing the problem and then it becomes analytic and including the point 0 because if we cannot include the point 0 otherwise it would not be a an open set. So, take out point 0 and all positive real numbers then this sort of complex plane with a cut is mapped to this strip now this strip is the becomes an open set there is no upper and lower boundary and then log maps in a nice fashion to this and this I can define for any k there. The only thing difference is the domain remains the same the range changes to a different strip. Okay. Now, another point to notice is that this choice of line to cut out which is determined by the definition I give to this each copy of log that choice is arbitrary. We uh, the fact that we had to choose this line is because of this definition that we say log this kth copy of log is equal to log r plus i theta plus 2 up pi i k where theta lies between 0 and 2 pi. If I change this range to something else say this then the only what changes firstly this in the range this strip changes 
it comes to it becomes this strip and in the domain now we take out point 0 and this the negative real axis. Again this is also arbitrary if I change this to maybe uh, minus alpha less than theta less than 2 pi plus minus alpha plus pi to pi whatever right. Then this will again shift and here also the cut line will shift to an appropriate angle alpha angle line starting from origin. So, this choice is completely up to us. So, since up to us we will choose the most convenient and simplest possible choice here and that turns out to be this one although the first instinct says to choose this one which is what I did last time, but this turns out to be a even better choice. The reason is that if we cut this out positive real axis then essentially we are saying that log z is not I am not giving the a diff I am not defining log z on positive real axis which is somewhat uh, counter intuitive because certainly log is defined on the entire po positive real axis log is not defined on the negative real axis in the usual sense, but certainly positive real axis is defined. So, we should try to include that definition at least when we generalize this definition to complex plane. there is another reason for it as we will see very soon. So, we will choose this instead of uh, this definition we will have this definition of the theta range and uh, therefore, what we the cut that we make is from here to the negative real axis and the strip that we get here are these. Okay, you with me so far? All right. Now let's try to do an analytic continuation of log z. It's defined over this domain. Fine. The missing part is this line. So let's try to extend the definition of log z over this line. To do that, let us pick up a point very close to this, and it will be useful to pick a point which is very close to minus 1 on the real axis, but not quite on it. Let at the same time lying on this circle of radius 1 somewhere here ok. So, let us say let z not and So, that is a point we pick the z not here this absolute value is 1 and this argument which is the angle it makes is minus theta minus pi plus epsilon. And now let us take a tiny circle around z not and the circle will have radius. So, this distance is about epsilon the distance of z naught from the real x axis approximately epsilon because we assume epsilon is very small and let us take a circle of radius 2 epsilon 
with center edge and not. Fine. And expand log z around z not as a power series. So, what is the power series of log around Z naught? The first term is uh, log 0 of Z naught itself, right? Plus Whatever the higher degree terms, the coefficient will be the derivatives of. We know that this is analytic around Z naught. The coefficient will be derivative of uh, this function at Z naught. So, what's the first derivative of log zero Z? One by Z, y. We know log x is 1 by x over reals, but why do we know that log z is 1 by z over complex numbers? What? That is right, so that is that is that is why we what we can use here just the last time lemma that gives you very simply that log z must be 1 by z sorry derivative of log z must be 1 by z because if you derivative of log z is an analytic function because log z is analytic right. And if you look at that analytic function log z prime minus 1 by z, this function is 0 over the entire positive real axis. Okay, so, therefore, it must be 0 over this entire domain, and that is one more reason why we want to include the positive real axis inside our domain because then we can just lift this definition of log derivative of log x to derivative of log z good. So, derivative of log uh, um, this is 1 by z which is uh, evaluated at z naught is z naught z minus z naught plus then the second derivative is uh, the same it just continue the same 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 trick and so we get minus 2 by z square and divided by there is a diff this is the first derivative no, minus minus 1 by z square and that is divided by 2 factorial. So, that is becomes minus 1 over 2 z naught square plus and so on. So, that is a power series expansion fine and now let us use the fact that uh, first let us plug in for this what is this log 0 of z naught use this definition that is equal to log r which is 0 so, that is by choice of z naught. So, what I get is i and theta is minus pi by x plus epsilon plus 1 over z naught which is Z 
e to the i minus pi plus epsilon Now let us say for we are only going to look at those z's which are at distance delta from z naught. So, what do we get? So, such a z will have this form delta being the absolute value and then phi will be vary over the as the circle moves at between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. Now, as a delta tends to 0, we can ignore these higher degree terms, because here you will see that in this you have delta multiplier here, here you have delta square multiplier, all other things these are they have absolute value 1. So, this absolute value of this term is delta square or delta square by 2 actually, then delta cube by 3 and so on. So, they have become smaller and smaller. So, I in the limit we can throw them all away and just stay with this. Of course, if delta really close becomes close to 0 we can throw this away also, but that I do not want to do. So, this is approximately Now, let us follow the trajectory of this point as we move around that circle. So, when uh, let us say delta is 0, then we are at somewhere little above minus pi, we are somewhere here when delta is 0 minus pi plus epsilon. Of course, delta is I am not going to say delta is 0, delta is going to be a little bigger than epsilon actually, twice epsilon or so. Uh, in that case, where are we? So, this says phi plus pi minus epsilon, epsilon here we can almost ignore in this phase case situation, and then 
so phi plus pi so if I have if I am here let us say this is the and if I choose phi to be 0 so at this point what is the corresponding point here phi is 0 so you get e to the i pi which is minus 1 so you subtract delta from there so minus pi plus epsilon minus delta where does that that is somewhere down here okay with me so far okay so we are actually this is this power series is taking me out of the definitional region of why down, why not? oh that is imaginary sorry sorry that is a real sorry no no, no. so that is right so no this this does not take you down it takes you here it's still inside okay fair enough still inside okay good so now we start moving in the circle as we move in this circle what happens to that point that also moves in a circle right of radius delta the center of that circle is minus pi plus epsilon and as we traverse around this circle this traverses around this circle of radius delta and completes the circle once once we complete here that also completes now given that delta is a little bigger than epsilon which we can always choose we do exceed this strip and go below it and then come back again so that is nice but the question is, is this power series that we just defined is this convergent in that disk that because unless it is convergent in this disk none of this will make sense but is it convergent obviously it is convergent because epsilon is very small so its value as you go here this is the power series expansion right if you look at even the absolute value as you go down here it starts becoming negligible so it is clearly convergent series You know what point did you not? This one? That was fine. Okay. Hmm? Why is it converging? Okay. So this is the power series we are looking at. When Z is in that circle of radius delta, right? And the expansion is like this. Every successive term, the absolute value is. Uh, delta to the k over k for the k plus first term. Now delta is very small, very close to zero. So the absolute value of this power series converges, right? Moreover, this power series is also uniformly convergent because if you look at the cut out first few terms, look at the remaining term absolute value of that because there is a big delta to the power k sitting in multiply as a multiplier to all of them and then everything inside converges to some finite value this whole thing is less than a finite value times delta to the power some power okay and since delta is less than 1 as that power increases that goes down to 0. So the power series is actually absolutely convergent. Uh, no, not absolutely. It's even more. It's uniformly convergent. For any delta less than one, we are choosing delta which is very close to zero, little more than epsilon. Epsilon is also something which is very close to zero. Delta is also, let's say, two times epsilon.
yes this is precisely at this goes around a circle of radius 2 epsilon at z0 okay so the and since epsilon is very close to 0 delta is also very close to 0 certainly less than 1 so everything converges very nicely this is somewhat funny thing that is happening now here because it is the range is very nicely defined I mean you have this you start at this point you look at a power series at it reasonable in fact you can expand the disk size to, to quite a bit actually you look at a power series defined on this disk given by the usual definition of power series that is uniformly convergent power series defined very well and log maps the function the log value according to the power series is defined on a goes on a nice circle here as well on a disk here. The problem is that it does not quite match with the the definition that we had earlier fixed of this mapping of log 0 z to this strip because this strip is being violated and we are actually jumping into the strip below. Okay, so what 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 kind of values is it taking? So this is a strip below. This is minus three pi. So it's certainly taking a values in the strip below. And So that is one issue. The second thing is this circle is not only going hitting the, the line which we have cut out, but also part of the domain below. Now we have already have a definition of log 0 z in the domain below. We did not have one on the strip which line which we cut out, but we do have a uh, this definition. right? Now, what is this definition or what is this value at this domain below? Actually, I goofed up, I should have taken z naught a little below this because that is when minus pi plus epsilon is correct, otherwise, it should have been plus pi plus epsilon. See that this angle is plus pi and this angle goes to minus pi, so that is but that does not change the argument. Uh, so, it it is this circle is ex, you know sort of cutting across this line which you have removed and going into the both sides of the domain. On one side it matches with the definition of log z, but on the other side the values provided by this do not quite match with the definition of log z, because if you are going on the positive side according to log 0 z what we should get is the imaginary part should be plus pi and then a little bit more and then there is some little bit here also there is not much because delta is small. In a actual, in a instead what we are getting is a minus pi and then something. So, this this power series does not even agree with this function on the domain it only agrees with the function on part of the domain but that is even stranger because we just proved last time that if two analytic functions agree on a contiguous uh, domain then they must agree everywhere. So, what what funny thing is happening here. The first thing is this is not quite a domain for the power series although it looks like it is a circle which is a domain, but remember that this line is cut out the in the original domain the definition of the original domain is this line is cut out. So, what this circle really corresponds to is two half circles where the middle line has been taken out. 
so it is not a domain because it is not connected and since it is not connected it is possible that that property is violated that property does not is not violated only when the domain is connected. So, it actually gives you a very nice example where when a domain is not connected that theorem fails to hold okay that is one conclusion from this, but we would like to get even something more out of it that exactly what is happening I mean after all this is artificial that we are taking out this line for the sake of definition we did it, but this is kind of artificial and then we have to have we have this power series is giving the all the nice values on this line which you have cut out as well. And if you now think and look at it carefully that what is happening on this side it agrees with log 0 z. Let us ask the question what does it agree with on this side does it agree with some other version of log on that side. And the answer is very clearly yes on this side. So, let me just write it here on Okay, this is just a formal statement of this fact that this disk below the uh, positive real, the real axis agrees with the and uh, on that that region power series agrees with log 0 z. And now the other section log what log minus 1 minus 1 means that this strip yeah. and that is what it actually comes down to this and if you see that this is going to get mapped to this thing below. Now, this is a very interesting observation because what this is saying is there is as we traverse around this circle. So, we start with this domain let us imagine that you are you have this infinitely log functions each of each defined over the entire complex plane with negative real axis thrown out and stack them on top of each other. Okay. There is one which corresponds to log 0 there are infinitely many planes below it infinitely many planes above it. So, this is the one we are looking at and we start at this point and start moving on this circle 
okay and as we cross this thinking of this you know keeping this in mind this mapping as we cross this when we are looking at the mapping given by log z then the point we end up with is not on the same uh, same plane instead it's on the plane below right again keeping in mind that when we say that traverse on the plane we are doing it in the context of this map given by log 0 z and then we expand it like a power series and then we traverse around this and as we move around keep looking at the log func log value of this as we cross this line number 1 the definition of log value log changes it becomes log of minus 1 z and we have actually moved down the plane to the points in the plane below. Similarly if you start with a point here and start circle moving along the circle or any curve leading cutting across this then what will happen is as we cross this line this definition will change to log 1 z and we will move on the plane above. So a nice way of visualizing this and that really sets up all these log functions in one context is to view this map logs as not taking a complex plane to a complex plane, but instead taking a very strange surface which I am going to define shortly to complex plane and this strange surface is formed by defined by taking infinite copies of complex plane cutting each copy. So, you take infinite copies of complex plane here stack them on top of each other cut out the negative real axis from all of them. So, make a cut so that it sort of visually it this these two sides can move apart then take this side twist it and take this side twist it up and join the two edges. So, this side ok let me try to draw it my skills in drawing are not very good. So, let us see if I can get it right. of course has not come out well at all, but I hope you get the drift that you take cut cut out this side and then try to fold it down cut out this side fold it up and join the two ends the two edges all the way from 0 to infinity, which means that this actually this point and this point should really touch each other. So, that is why it is a very strange kind of uh, surface that you have this infinitely many 
planes they all collapse get collapsed at point 0 they are really this all sort of held together at point 0 then they go out like this where they are adjoining strips this is joined to this and this one is folded up and the other one is folded below and that is joined. Similarly, that is folded down this folded up and joined. Now, if you traverse start any point and traverse on this strange surface you will follow the rules given by this. On this surface log z is one function there are no infinitely many functions just one function which is defined everywhere except the point 0 which is nice and it is completely analytic over this entire surface and it maps this entire surface to the entire complex plane. So, the range is very nice just the complex plane the whole complex plane the domain is this strange surface this surface is called a Riemann surface. So, Riemann was the one who realized that we can visualize such the one to many functions as being one to one on a different surface which he and the name sort of came from Riemann. And there are all strange kind of Riemann surfaces depending on which function you are trying to analyze. So is there also geometry on this? Oh yes, there is a complete uh, geometry on Riemann. Uh, this the Riemannian geometry is defined over Riemann's. Well, one of the things it does is to define geometry on Riemann surface. Uh, how do we convert that? It's uniformly convergent. Uniformly convergent. Yeah. Oh, it's uniformly convergent. Sorry. It has a common factor which is very small. Yes. Yes. But there are still infinitely many terms. Yes, but they convert because it's sort of a geometric series. See, once you take, let's look at some term at delta to the m, and this, there is whatever power this is, this is all absolute value one. It doesn't matter what this is. Sorry, and and there is something divided by where there is m below there. And there are signs plus minus also. Not factorial. The log expansion of log log is x to the m by m. Right. So plus. So just let's just change. Make to make the things worse. Change all the signs to plus one. Change the all phases to one. So the series looks like delta to the m plus one by m plus one. And let's throw all of these out also. They are also reducing the series. So that is a, it's a plane geometric series which sums up to delta to the m over 1 minus delta that is it. Okay. Is no, no it is not at all homeomorphic to a plane because you see that the strangeness of this that these points they all are collapsed into a single point they are not distinct points the zeros of this because this the when you cut of course you can as you go down you can twist it more but at close to this you can't really there is no no place to twist so they all need to come together to get joined there and then they sort of branch out and so if you traverse you make it you start on this surface and travels in a make a circle travel in a circle you actually go up in a spiral go down in a spiral. Well travel circle around 0 circle elsewhere may not be that bad something for your homework not an assignment just to keep you busy. Uh, consider the function square root z that is also one to many function is one to many over reals also. So, it is certainly one to many over complex numbers ok. Now, construct the Riemannian surface 
for square root z. So, that over that surface it is 1 to 1 and analytic everywhere. 